there has been a delay in the start of this evening's session of the Democratic National Convention. CBS Radio, therefore, will start its convention broadcast one half hour from now at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time. Meanwhile, we resume our regularly scheduled program. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city. For under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Kendall picked up two good prints at the jewelry store and checked right out. They fit Hennessy. Well, how about the mug? Bertram Goldberg and Carlo made him right away. Murph went through Hennessy's room, found most of the stuff from the McClure Hall. The rest of us bound to turn up. Fellow show up yet? Well, Carlton said he might be a little late. I told Pete to run Hennessy on the last batch. Got the 48 coming through tonight. Oh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Hennessy fell from Colorado Springs four years ago. The same stuff? Jewelry store? Uh, cattle rustling. Huh? Yeah. Well, this boy's been around. He still owes him five for breaking parole in Cannon City. I'll be done. Well, I'll grab one over here. I want fellas come in and show him over, will you? Right, sir. Hey, I have your attention, please. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and chart. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they're sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Keep it moving, boys. Right over here to the end of the stage. Spread out, stand facing the screen. Look straight ahead, no talking. Okay, number one, Saul Greenberg, Grand Theft Auto. Get your hands out of your pockets, Saul. Yes, sir. Where do you live? Uh, Omaha, Nebraska. The last place you slept, Saul. Oh, uh, Yorkshire Arms Department. It's in the Riverside District. I don't know the address. Any weapons when you were picked up? Yeah. What? Well, I had a gun and a knife. Well, let's start with the gun. What kind? What make? A little twenty-two pistol, single-shot Smith. How big was the knife? Oh, about this long. Ten inches? Eight inches? About ten inches. How long have you been in town, Saul? Since last Thursday. Don't look at me. Look out there through the screen. Were you alone when you were arrested? Yeah, I was alone. What kind of work do you do? I don't work exactly. Mean you've never worked in your life? Oh, sure, but I mean not on a job, you know. No, I don't know. What do you mean? What do you do to make a living? I steal cars. Thank you, Saul. Next, number two, James Shanks. Burglary. Up to the circle. Yeah. Living any particular place these days, Jimmy? Now, you know me, Sergeant uh, Carger, huh? Yeah. I ain't so good no more. Uh, how, how you been? Fine, fine. Where'd you sleep last night, Jim? Uh, last night? Yeah, last night. Over on Glenview in a parked car. How about the night before? Oh, same street and di- different car. <laughs> Ever think about getting a job, Jimmy? Oh, sure, sure. I, I thought about it a lot. That all? Well, I had a job once, Carger. I like to kill I'm me Sergeant when... Carger, Jimmy. Oh, no, no, no offense. Anybody with you when you were arrested? Uh, I was going to tell you about when I worked. Didn't Answer you? the questions. Anybody with you when you were arrested? Well, yeah. A guy named Donald. You don't know the rest of his name? Oh, just Donald. I, I don't know him very long. An hour or two. Donald Rhodes? Well, he's in the next room. I saw him here just before I come out here. He's a nice kid. You know how old he is? No. He's 17, Jim. This is his first lineup. No. Honest? Honest. His first, huh? Well, what do you know about that? I know he won't like it very much, Jim. Number three, Rudolph Tate, open chart. Where do you live, Rudolph? Uh, 43, 356 North 107th Street. What do you do? I'm a butcher. Where do you work? A uh, lands down market. When were you arrested? This morning at the market. Anyone else arrested with you? Yeah. Him. 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 And him. You know these men? Sure. George Dimonetti, right there. 
Frank and Paul Dorsey, the other two fellas. And Vic Spade. How long you known them? Which one? Them and Eddie. Well, all my life. How about the Dorsey brothers? Oh, let me see. It's about, oh, I guess about five years, maybe six. And Spade? Just a couple of weeks. It's his fault. What's his fault? It was all his hmm? idea. He came in Captain and asked Waldo us to do it. Captain Waldo wants you in his office. Did make yeah. you do it, Rudolph? I'm telling you, he had the idea in the first place. The whole thing was his uh, idea. Why? Did he make oh, you do okay. it? That's uh, what uh, I take care know. of fellows when he comes in. I'll well, be with right. Waldo. Here's the sheet. Oh, right. Okay, Asher. We'll see That's you all right. all I can say. All right, slide on down. Number four, George Demonetti. Ooh, it's hot in there. Air conditioning went out. Again? That's a mess. I want to pull the whole system out and start over. Oh, you said it. Well, maybe someday. Maybe. <laughs> Bill? Keep working on them and check with me later. Ben's starting from this end. Come in, Ben. Asher? Yeah, that's right. He just came in. Okay. Bye. Ben, Ed Drinkler's been snatched. The restaurant man? Yeah. His wife got this telegram at 8 o'clock tonight. Western Union people notified us. Mm -hmm. I have your husband. I want 10,000 in 10s, 20s, 50s. I'll let you know where you can pick him up. If you call him the police, he'll be there to stand by. It was phoned into the office from a pay booth in Arveda. No way to track it down. Let's see that, Ben. Yeah, here. Now, this Thanks. is the story. Drinkler called his wife from his office last night about 6 and said he had some work to get out. Mrs. Drinkler called him back there about 9 and he said he'd be home by midnight. Mrs. Drinkler went on to bed. When she got up this morning, she assumed he'd left the house already, but when he didn't show up for dinner tonight, she got worried and phoned the office. They told her he hadn't been in all day long. Mrs. Drinkler was phoning friends around town looking for him when the wire came in. Small got there about half an hour after the messenger boy. He's still there. Any leads? No, I sent a detail down to Drinkler's office. Murph and Crockett talked to his secretary and office manager. They weren't much help. People who work in the building, the night watchman and scrub lady, said Drinkler had a visitor about 10 o'clock last night. Tall man, well-dressed. Gave a pretty hazy description. Could have been anyone. We're checking it out. Is that all? That's about it. Drinkler's car is still parked in the rear of the building. Something may turn up later on. Right now, we're going to have to play along. Well, what happened? Well, Mrs. Drinkler didn't have any trouble getting the money. It's being marked right now. The boys are working on it. You know what we're up against, Ben. Can't spend too much time. We'll have to figure it out as we go along. Yeah. Here's the address. 313 Cherry Drive, straight out York. Till you get to the parkway, then right. Two blocks beyond the golf course. Take uh, 17K. It's cleared with motor pool. Okay. Place might be watched. Park down the street and go in the alleyway. I've uh, got units here, 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 and here. Radio control's all set up. All right. A contact will be by phone or message again. It's the only way right now we can depend on getting any kind of lead. Small, Adler, Papish, and some men from the crime lab are out there. Federal man should be along pretty soon. I'll bring Carger and Quine out with me later on. Okay, that's it. All right. Now, uh, use anything, anyone. Do anything that occurs to you, Ben. I'll be right with you all the way. Okay. Oh, uh, Bill. Huh? Now, how's Mrs. Drinkler taking it? She wants her husband back. Hi, Small. Hi, Ben. Asher. Hi. This way. Mrs. Drinkler's in the next room. She's scared silly. Yeah, can you blame her? No, but we're going to need her if they happen to call. Yeah. Lab put in another line here and three extensions on the original line. This one in here, one on the floor below us in the kitchen, and one in the hallway. All right. Asher, take the extra line and check the telephone company. And uh, keep all the lights out except in the living room. Right, Ben. They tricked up a tape recorder. Any call comes in will go on the tape automatically the minute the connection's made. Circuit's wide open? Yeah. What do you think, Ben? Well, she got the wire three hours ago. I don't think they'd take any chance of staking the place out to see what she did. Looks too good right now. Holding him a whole day before contacting her. Well, there's a chance they'll call in tonight sometime, if they cased it at all. You got a smoke, Ben? Uh, here. Thanks. Anybody else in the house? Boys in Europe this summer. The cook left two days ago on a week's vacation. Mrs. Drinkler's been holding it down. Well, I guess I better... Oh, 
Uh, feeling a little better, Mrs. Drinkler? Why don't you all go away, Sergeant? Why don't you leave my home, please? We want to help you, ma'am. This is Lieutenant Guthrie. How do you do? Will How you do you please do? Please take these men away. Uh, Mrs. Drinkler, we're going to do everything humanly possible to bring your husband back here safely and to get the people responsible for taking him. I wish you'd try to see it our way. He's my husband. I want him back. I'll pay them the money they want. I just want my husband, don't you understand? Yes, ma'am. I, we want him back, too. He's our first concern. Please, Mrs. None Drinkler. of you understand. None of you. They'll get frightened when they know you're here. They'll kill him. They'll kill Ed. There's nothing to stop them. There's everything to stop them. They know that the police and federal people would never stop looking for him if they did that. You don't really believe that, Lieutenant. I know you don't. I've been sitting in my room thinking about it. They'd kill him because there's no reason to keep him alive. Get no, Dr. Gerson on. No here, right reason at all. Now you people are here and they'll kill him because you're here. Uh, wouldn't you like to go because in the bedroom? Because you're here. Why are you here? To get your husband back alive, no. Mrs. Drinkler. No, that isn't true. He's been missing a whole day. You think Ed's already dead, don't you? Please, if you just try You know to... he's already dead, don't you? You know it. We only know that he's got to be found, Mrs. Get Drinkler. out! Get out of my house! Get out! Get out! Get out! You're making a Gerson wants to take it out of the hospital. Is she out of it? Yeah. Well, this is Officer Grace Hanley, Ben. Uh, hello, Grace. How do you do, Lieutenant? You know the setup? Yes, sir. Everything may depend on the way you answer that phone if the kidnapper calls in. I know, Lieutenant. I try to stall him, do anything, so he'll stay on the wire long enough to trace it. I understand. You can take it in here. I'll be downstairs. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Okay, Pim. Oh, uh, don't jump it if he rings. I want to hear his voice, so we'll uh, have to pick it up together. I know. Anything more on that description? Well, Klein took a crew and went to work on it. The man who runs an all-night diner remembered a black caddy sedan out in front of the building. Thinks he saw a drinkler and another man get into it about 10 o'clock. Time checks with the others? Yeah. Fits with a tall angle, too. But that's about all. No license? Nothing. Waldo put out an APB on drinkler and what we have on the other man. The car's not much help. Yeah. Well, long night coming up. Yeah. Pete... Yeah. As near as we can make it, he was taken around 10 last night. Yeah. Think he might still be alive? I'm afraid to think, Ben. Two still awake? Trying to be. I think I'll see if our policewoman's still alive. She's had night duty for three months. She's used to it. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello. Your house full of policemen. Sure quiet around here. We're the quiet time. Asher. Yeah. Hold it, Grace. You say when? We'll both pick up on the count of three. Asher. One. Two. Three. Hello? Hello. I want to speak with Mrs. Drinkler. This is Mrs. Drinkler. Are you the man... Did you get the money? Yes. In ten, twenties, fifties? Yes, just as you asked. It's all... What do you want me to do? Get ten thousand more. What? You heard me, ten thousand more in tens, twenties, and fifties. I can't get that much money. It took everything I'm I... I'm not going to argue with you, Mrs. Drinkler. If you want to see your husband again, get another ten thousand. But... And remember, no police... I'll kill him if you call him the police. Please listen to me. Ten thousand is all I can get together. I know that isn't true, Mrs. Drinkler. I want twenty thousand dollars, and I want it at nine o'clock tonight. Well, where? What do you want me to do? Drive over to the Museum of Natural History in City Park. Park your car there by the fountain. Have the money in a bag. Just wait by the fountain. Please. 
Okay, Grace. Good job. He's off. Okay, okay. Thanks a lot. Sorry, Ben. He wasn't on long enough. We lost him. Almost 300 specialists, reporters, writers, technicians, and engineers are on the job for CBS Radio at the Democratic Convention. That's one reason why CBS Radio convention coverage is complete, bringing you not only the meetings on the floor, but also the highlights and news breaks all around Chicago at convention time. Another reason why CBS Radio coverage is best is because of its famous reporters, Edward R. Murrow, Lowell Thomas, Don Hollenbeck, and many more. Stay tuned to CBS Radio for the whole story of the Democratic Convention. All set, Ben. Everybody's here. City engineer's office sent up that map? Yeah, it's marked already. Good. Okay, boys, the lieutenant's here. Let's get it down. All you men have your sheets on this? It's pretty scanty. We haven't got much to go on, but we're going to have to use what we have. Tall man who drives a black 46 Cadillac sedan. That's all we know about him. We want to know a lot more. Pete? Yeah. All right, come on up a little closer here. This is City Park. Covered on the east by Federal Boulevard, west by Franklin Street. 33rd runs to the south, parkway to the north. 16 road entrances to the park. Now, here's the way it'll work. Two men to a car, one car to every entrance. We start numbering them from the Federal Boulevard entrance. One, and then here's two, and three, and so on. Your men will be in cars covering the entrances. There'll be other units working Federal, Franklin, 33rd, and Parkway. Well, what about the museum itself, then? Yeah. Well, I can't take a chance. We'd like to have some men in there because it's nearest to the fountain meeting place, but someone in the museum might be connected with it. There's no way to station or hide a police officer around that fountain. The park commissioner's going to help us all he can. The whole thing's pretty much up to us. We hope the kidnapper shows up to get his money. We hope he'll drive the black Cadillac. We hope he's a tall man and that we recognize him. How's the other part of it going to work? Officer Grace Hanley's going to fill in again. She'll wear one of Mrs. Drinkler's coats, and she'll drive Mrs. Drinkler's car over to the park tonight. Anybody hidden in the car? She'll be alone. Communications will make up a new code signal for tonight. You'll get it in your radios. Any questions? Yeah, when, when do we start? Well, I'm staggering him. First car goes in at 4 o'clock. Anything else? Uh, I guess that does it, Pete. Okay. All right, Ben. Israel and Pollard, 16K on gate 1. 4 o'clock. Radio now. How's it look, Ben? Well, seems like the best thing we can do. Try to sucker him into a trap. Eh, I don't like it. Well, neither do I, Bill. This bird's really done a slick job. Not one lead. Nothing we can get hold of. Yeah. Anything new in the car? Not even a possible. Benny's got us. The whole force has been alerted. Drinkler's description's been broadcast every half hour since 9 o'clock last night. The kidnapper and the car's on the wire all over the country, and still he's got us. I don't want anybody taking a break until we get him. Right, Bill. Waldo. Uh, hold it, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's check it out. Bye. Small. Man at the diner picked one. Mm hmm? Guy named Charles Newton. Says he looks like the man who was with Drinkler. Right. Where's the makeshift? Oh. Charles Edward Newton, male Caucasian, age 31. Height, 6 feet 2 inches. Weight, 162 pounds. Dark brown hair, blue eyes. Last known address, 5768 Gilpin Avenue. Previous arrest, narcotics, August 3, 1949. <laughs> There's a mama sheet here. Yeah, not much on it. He's from Topeka, Kansas. Okay. Let me see that. Mm-hmm. 
Doesn't look much like a kidnapper, does he, Ben? I don't know. What's a kidnapper supposed to look like? Yeah. Well, at least the dog's at home. Yeah. Yeah, what is it? Uh, police officers would like to ask you a few questions. Police, you say? Yeah. Would you like to come in? Well, thank you very much. What is it? What's wrong? We'd like to know your name. Julie Newton, Ms. Newton, why? What's your husband's name? Thad Newton. I'd like to know why you're here. We're trying to locate a man named Charles Edward Newton. We understand he lived here once. Oh, no. You're mistaken. Charlie never lived with us. Oh? Well, then you know him. Well, Charlie's Thad's brother. But he just had his mail sent here. He never lived here. Well, do you know where he's living now? Is he in trouble? We just want to talk to him, ma'am. You know his address? Oh, yeah. I have it written down. I have it somewhere here. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Here it is. It's 3535 Columbine Street. Columbine? Yes, 3535 Columbine Street, Kansas City, Missouri. Well, how long has he lived there, Mrs. Newton? Oh, a month, I guess. Last time we saw him, he said he's on his way, and that's five weeks ago, anyhow. Uh -huh. Do you know where he actually lived here in town? No, Thad told me Charlie wasn't... Well, he got in trouble now and then. Charlie only came here twice. Now and then he'd call us if he had any mail or phone calls, but he never let us know where he lived. Did he have any mail or phone calls? Once, a girl called up. I think she was from a used car lot in town, but that's all. Charlie called up later, and I told him about it. Now, when was this? Just before he left. Did Charlie have a car? No, I think he bought one from that lot. Do you remember the name of the used car deal? Empire Motors, I think it's called. I'm not sure. Do you know what kind of a car he bought? Well, it's the one he drove by, and it's a real nice one. Hmm? He came by to give us this address just before he left. He was driving a real nice car. When I asked him if he was going to buy it, he said he thought he would. It was a used one, but it was very nice. Cadillac, big black sedan. The car was purchased the fifth of last month. Man at the used car lot identified the mug, but sales slip showed Newton used the name Raymond Atlas. Same address on Gilpin. Yeah. We put out a supplementary APB. Turns out a lot better now. Had a complete description on Newton and the car. Well, he's somewhere in town. At least he was yesterday. Anything from Kansas City? Yeah, it just came in. No Columbine Street there. Yeah. Well, 3.30. You going out to the park pretty soon? I hope we don't have to. Get anything out of Newton's brother? He said he didn't have much to do with Charles. Thought he might have worked as a cook in one of Drinkler's restaurants once. Didn't know. Checking it now. He set it up all right. Yeah, he sure did. Hi, Ben Quinn. Hi. I talked to the bartender and owner of the Curtis Bar. You remember Newton coming in there off and on for a year. Says he came in about a month ago and told everybody he was leaving town. Haven't seen him since. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, that's about the only place we had listed on his mama sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. he's covered up Bad. everything... Yeah? Uh, Pete's waiting for you in the garage. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, did Small check in? Yeah, Mrs. Drinkler had a stroke. Ben? She's paralyzed on one side. Can't recognize anybody. Aircraft plant must be letting out. Yeah, they take the boulevard up to Colfax. There are a lot of cars. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. Huh? Ticket. What'd he do? Cut out. Hit the radio, will you, Pete? Hmm. Oh, it ought to be dark in another half hour. Paper said the sun had set at 7.32 today. Hmm? 33. At 2.11. 23.45, Kirk. See the man. 99. A 415, number 312, Eldon Place. See the man. Should be all set up now. Yeah, I'll check. 17K to unit 304R. Come in. 304R to unit 17K. This is Waldo. Yeah, go ahead, Ben. Everybody set? Stand by. Roger. Want to take Parkway for a while, Ben? Yeah, it won't hurt. You see that follow-up on Newton? Why? 1946, passed civil service examination for the department. Huh? Yeah. He was going to be a cop once. <laughs> 304R to unit 17K. Go ahead, 304R. 
Everyone's posted here, Ben. Nothing so far. Okay, Bill. Hey, Ben. We'll... Huh? Up there. Hold on, Bill. 34 early, 678? Yeah, that's the car. 17K to 304R, spotted suspect. License number 34 early, 678. Black Cadillac sedan, headed east on Parkway. Roger. 304R to control 4. 304R to control 4. Suspect traveling east on Parkway. They turned off, Ben. Yeah. 17K, suspect turned right at 27th Street, now traveling north. We are following. 304R to control 4. All units stand by. You've seen us, Ben. We'll have to run him, P. Let her go. Unit 66, 68, 53 cover intersections at Randall Boulevard and 27th. Units 35 and 22 move in on the nearest crossing to Randall and 27th. 105A, 116K, 118K close yeah. in on intersections and city ahead. highway and Two federal. police cars. Uh, he's seen them. Right against that signboard. Yeah. Ah, there he goes, Ben. Newton! Look out, Pete! You all right? Yeah. Come on. Which way? I thought those houses. Uh, no. He's doubling back for the street. Yeah. Stop, Ben. Began firing at everybody in sight. Yeah. Better get an ambulance. Yeah. Come on. Uh, sure smashed up the front of it. Yeah. Ben, over here. Find something? Sprinkler. Stuffed in the trunk. Yeah. He was going to deliver him. Yeah. Before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you are sure or not too sure, the The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, with Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by E. Jack Newman, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Raymond Burr, Joe Duval. Howard McNear, Peter Leeds, Virginia Gregg, and Gene Bates. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. Many people may not have enough money to contribute to our national campaigns, but the today the Amir to the battle lines of Korea is pitifully thin. American men may be suffering, perhaps dying, because of a lack of that life-giving plasma. Make your blood contribution now. Give to America's bloodline a lifeline to Korea.